Welcome to Design Patterns. Today we talk about the master slave pattern. Okay, what is the master slave pattern all about? It is about distributing work amongst some helpers. And by the way, a master slave is not the yeah, politically correct name for this pattern anymore. Today we would say coordinator helper, coordinator worker. Uh, something like this. Let's get back to the master slave. We have some tasks which we, which we want to process and we want this to, to, to distribute these tasks among our system. This could look like this. Well, let me move it out of, out of the way. There is a client and this client calls some service by the master, from the master, but the master itself does not do the work he delegates the work to some slaves or workers. This could be some threads, some processes, some other nodes on the, on the network, some servers which actually do the work. And in the end, he collects the results again and returns this to the, to the client. So you also can see that uh, some kind of map reduce idea is already um, woven into this design pattern. But yeah, that's the basic structure. Now let's get into the context problem and so on. So the context is that we have multiple tasks and we want to process them. So what is the problem? Of course, how can we distribute these tasks among our system? And how can we distribute them in a yeah, structured and maintainable way? So not just randomly distributed over our system, but coordinated somehow. So what are the forces here? Sometimes tasks are very fine-grained. Sometimes tasks are very big. Uh, in order to distribute them in a yeah, reasonable manner, they should have the right size and about equal size. That's important. If you have a mixture of many different sizes of tasks, it's difficult to distribute them. Often we have many instances of the same problem. So the same problem um, should be done a thousand times. Or we have a problem which can easily be um, split into, into several uh, groups and each of these groups can be solved separately then multi-threading and multi-processing is preferred, of course. So if we have these isolated tasks, wouldn't it be cool to use all our computing power, all our resources? Um, this doesn't have to be all CPU cores, maybe also multiple disks, maybe multiple uh, communication buses and so on. So we want to use all our available resources in parallel in order to be as fast as possible. Um, it is important that the subtasks are not dependent on, on, on each other. Otherwise, I have a dependency, a dependency graph and most of the tasks will be wait until previous tasks finish. So I cannot yeah, fully uh, use the parallelization. And the subtasks should not be dependent on the partitioning algorithm. So this should be separate um, concerns. So the one who is distributing the work and the, the ones who actually do the work. Uh, the roles should be clearly assigned so that this is yeah, better, um, better man maintainable. Better man so the maintenance is easier. So what is the solution? Of course, divide and conquer. So we take all those tasks and distribute, it, uh, distribute them amongst workers. Um, but in order to do this, we have to introduce some instance who distributes the work and collects the work again after, yeah, after it's done. So this is the, the master and the new terms, this is the coordinator. 
and all our workers need to have some common interface in order that the coordinator can communicate with them. Uh, also, the clients only communicate with the master. So what are the consequences? Of course, we can extend our system. We can add additional slaves, so we are extensible. Exchangeability is also given, so we can exchange some of the slaves easily. The coordinator will, um, yeah, will, will consider this. We have a separation of concerns. So our coordinator and our um, slaves have different roles and they are, def they are um, separated explicitly. So, okay, we know who does what. What is the responsibility of the master? What is the responsibility of the slaves? We have fault tolerance. So if a slave fails, the master can assign the work to another slave. We have efficiency because we can use, we can make use of all our parallel uh, computation power. And now a uh, uh, drawback is it's not always feasible. So either we don't have multiple machines, we don't have multiple cores, or um, the communication overhead to distribute the work is more work than actually doing it. So then it's not feasible. That's, that's what I meant with um, the tasks should not be too fine-grained because uh, communication also takes time. And yeah, if the communication of the data takes more time than actually solving a task, hmm, that's a problem. Partitioning and control can be tricky, of course. So uh, this, this comes into a scheduling problem. So how should I schedule all my tasks or how should I distribute all my tasks to the slaves that all slaves are equally, um, equally used? So this can be difficult. That's why uh, it's easier when uh, we solve the same problem and it's easier when all tasks are of the same size, then yeah, we can distribute them um, more easily. Then multi-threading is difficult to debug. Of course, <laughs> every one of you who um, programmed multi-threading multi programs knows the order is not deterministic. And oftentimes you have some effects which, yeah, are just by, by which happen randomly. So it may be difficult to debug these applications. And ah, yeah, varying task size could lead to problems. This I already mentioned before. So, master slave. 